What up, dog? You think it's no diggy? It's not. You know, Bill Withers had a stutter. He was a stutterer. Oh, Bill Withers, by the way. Yeah, he had a stutter, but he can sing his ass off. It's kind of funny how that works. My homeboy's uh, father was like that. He stuttered his ass off, but was a lawyer, and he'd go into fucking go go to trial and be a fucking beast. We there was this kid in our neighborhood that stu- had a stutter. We made fun of him so bad that we developed a stutter. We'd be like, whoop, 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 whoop. and then next thing you know, it sound I sound like a turntable, like a mixing. What you get, man? Gotta be nice sometimes. Did they get how long? How long is the how long is the intern had the fucking uh, can I help you headset? She looks like she looks. Look at that progressive insurance. How can I help you? Fuck yeah, I'm I'm not mad. I was just curious. I just noticed. Shows you what I noticed. Anna Akbari is coming in. That's my girl. Fucking love talking to her. What'd you do last night, Jude? Nothing. I'm fucking sick. The only thing that makes me sound not sick is a crazy. One in one sick. Just take fucking modafinil or whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know what the fuck it is. Some science drug. That's why I'm chock full of fucking. St- Anna, I'm coming out there tomorrow, 1 o'clock at Postman Books, or Postman Books, I don't know how to say it, P-O-S-M-A-N Books, 1 p.m., come out there. You better show up, Atlanta's been bothering me to come. I bet you that wasn't even in the article that she wrote. I bet you that part wasn't even in the article. Ah, uh, you know what I don't, This is what I want here. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah, that's what I got on deck. I'm taking that red eye tonight to Atlanta, Georgia. I'll be staying in Buckhead, which I heard is the cool part. Buckhead, do my little fucking book tour. Crowd street, turn that shit up. All right, Jay, Jay in Ann Arbor. You might be yes, Danica, you butcher the spelling of Ann Arbor, by the way. You, you fucking, I don't know. These young kids don't know how to spell no more. Everything's autocorrect. Jesus fucking Christ. Ann Arbor, it's two words, two N's, space, Arbor. You wrote Ann Arbor. A N A R B O R. J Ann An Arbor. Yes, sir. What up, though, man? Hey, man. Bro. I was gonna ask you how can you pick up on uh, pick on John all the time, but I figured it out after yesterday, man. What? You had you had a little game on, right? It was yeah. called Black Other or something like that. Black White or Other? It, yeah. Yeah, I've heard it a couple times, whatever. So I called because I'm like, I'm a fan of you. My wife is. She read your book. And I was like, shit, I might actually get a signed book. Yeah. So I'm first. I'm first in line. And here's what really pissed me off. I've actually called and called in and defended the dude before. Yep. Don't what do What did he do? The first question he asked me is, I ever played it before? And I was like, uh, or do I know what it is? I'm like, uh, and then he said, okay, thanks for calling by. I'm like, you dumb motherfucker. How about this, dickhead? I could discern instantly you weren't you weren't ready. You weren't qualified. You, you didn't have what it took. And I'm not what, ready. And I, and I have other things Are to do. I'm not going to waste me, my time boy? with you, Jay. Really? Yeah, absolutely. You didn't get through, did you? You know what? You could have I can done tell within five quick, seconds if someone hey, sucks. Hey, hey, hey. And pardon me, I said, said, with you, I, I, I figured out calling, like three. Your dumbass could have said. You're the dumbass motherfucker. Hey, did you get on the air? answer the question. No, you're a dumbass, you fucking cracker ass motherfucker. Shut the fuck up. I'm a cracker boy. ass. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, continue, Jay. I'm done. Your ass is Yeah, stupid. I know you're done. I see why you were done did. yesterday. I see why he fucks with you. You're dumb. 
oh, a Jay, game that simple. Jay, you're embarrassing play, yourself. Would, you're embarrassing yourself on national your radio. to say, hey, thanks for calling. You could explain the game as quick, you dumb motherfucker. All right, here's. All right, we'll give you. We'll give you a chance. I'll, I got a black, white, or other for you. You tell. You tell me what you think it is and why. You ready? Oh, he just bailed. Did he just bail or did you just hang up on him? I can't remember. <laughs> no, I did not hang up on him. I'm kidding. He hung. He, he, I was about to play. I was about I to know. let him do a question. I was about I to. Know. I was about to see. I was about to see if you were right or wrong about him. I I, I could tell. I was about to see if he was right or wrong, John. I already know enough about Jay. Oh yeah, because you're fucking a beast at screening calls. We we've never had a dud with you. I thought the one yesterday was solid. Oh, the one yesterday. He delivered. He was awesome. He was fucking great yesterday. Jay was up against some stiff competition. You didn't even give him a chance. Hey, you didn't even give him a chance, John. That's fine. He's, I'm sure he's used to that. <laughs> I feel like he would beat you up if he saw you in person. He was, he's, he probably will. He, he seemed that, he seemed that <laughs> upset. He really was. All right, Jay, I'm sorry. Don't all right. Now you apologizing? Well, just trying to cover you, all bases. Now you got to stand your ground, bro. You can't You can't yeah, go back. Jay. Yeah, there you go. It's more like it. You can't be like all of You can't be talking that much shit and then fucking apologize. Right. Jay's dead to me. There you go. That other guy. They don't play in an arbor. <laughs> <laughs> They'll play out there in Anurver, Anurver, Michigan. It's not like U of M's not located there. It's, we fuck with Danica a little bit more. I'm spelling ass motherfucker. At least she's good at screening. On my mind. That's with the Crusaders. On my mind. And Arbor's a music group, in case you guys are wondering. Who knew? From Phoenix, Arizona. He just got cussed out by a dude from a music group. I didn't even realize that. He, he doesn't look like any of the guys that... He doesn't sound like any of the guys in the picture, but uh, who knew? The phone lines blew up now. I don't know what the fuck happened, John. Don't roll your eyes. Oh, I don't want to deal with this. Oh, oh, brother. Wheels are in motion. Oh. False, false. That's my favorite part. False. I bet you people just want to beat the shit out of you in school. Teacher, weren't we supposed to have a test today? I'm just trying to give him a chance to call back. All right, look, he didn't take it. Boom, boom. This is what we got. Anna Akbari. Feel Good Friday. And uh, the motherfucking um, the news with Johnny. Johnny the Chin. All right. Actually, I'm gonna play a I'm gonna play a song from over here. You wanna hear him play. Fuck me, dude. Oh, it just doesn't stop. Just doesn't. All right, here's a little thing from Billboard Brothers. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. Hey, everybody. I got the doc, Anna Akbari here, PhD. You're the smartest person we ever get to talk to on a regular basis. I, I That's one of my favorite labels in life, I think. <laughs> that, that, that you're one of the smartest people I get to talk to? Yes. I know. Can I, can I tell your secret what, what was so smart? What? That you just went to Bali just because for like, fuck it. Yeah. I mean, I was working. I know you were working, but you could turn it up right there. Oh, that was so smart. It was like, you know what? You said that it was cheaper to just go to Bali than pay rent in L.A. It was yeah. fucking the smartest shit ever. I was like. I did that for a couple of months. That's smart thinking. Yeah. It was. Um, it, the thing is, you have to keep up perception because sometimes if you do that for too long, people think you've just checked out and are right. like an island bum. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you go for a month month and a half at a time it's fucking genius yeah i know you're like you figure you're like the flight in the airbnb <laughs> or whatever fuck they have is yeah. cheaper than living in la so because yeah, you go literally do that. spend no money once you're there i mean your day-to-day -day life i'd just be getting hand jobs every fucking do they got that do, <laughs> well let me are tell there you poor this. people there that would jerk me off so you can get an in-house hour-long massage 
for five dollars an hour. And I have not ever inquired about some I'd, add-ons. I would but... give them twenty, and they would. There, there'd be no way they wouldn't jerk me off. I'd be like, "This, you can't say no to this." They do. They do. Like even for women, you know, it's if take I get you thirty seconds, I can say this as a woman: if I get a massage in the U.S., they don't generally massage my breasts, whereas right. there they do try to. Right. And they really go go deep for the inner thigh. I was talking so to my homegirl. I home think that's girl. an option. Like I was talking to my homegirl. I feel like every massage should end with an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> not even like I, it, it can even be like an ugly lady doing it to me you know what I mean as long as it's not a dude like just I feel like that's ultimate relaxation I mean but you don't think you should have to pay extra for that I'd be willing to I mean you just think it should be an option roll it into the price <laughs> my homegirl goes, goes to somebody who soothes he, he fingers her every fucking time really see I've always wondered I've never actually met a woman who has done the equivalent of a happy ending yeah, she gets she gets the same guy. He shows up, massage, pop, pop, pop. Hits the clit. Really? Leaves her laid out there. That's then, where here. This is Miami. Her, and her cheap ass won't even tip him. I'm like, oh. you're a cheap motherfucker. <laughs> and is she uh, pleased by? She, she must keeps be. getting them. So. <laughs> I don't know how he got here. We went. To, oh, it was from Bali. To, yeah, I don't. To finger fucking mm. at, on soothe. That's a slippery slope right there. That's what I. I hate giving massages. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I just mush around. I'm actually really good at giving massages. Are you? I am very good. I have very strong hands. I bet you do. <laughs> I bet you do. I try to talk you into a fucking hand job. But we're like, just, just massage you. Massage you there. I yeah, but start. I, I know massage how you, you like there. your massages to end. You've already given that away. I know. So. Damn it. <laughs> I would have to come with a lot of money. I just... I have to have you really have to start thinking about your like what I yeah what's the price? I mean, if you're a massage therapist, I wouldn't necessarily say Bali is the greatest place for you to go given yeah. given the going rate. I remember going to a place that was a prostitute, mm. and I could tell it was because the the massage was so awful. Yeah, right. And I was like, oh, she's supposed to fuck me, like because she is she has she has, she has no idea what she's doing. Well, you know, whenever you see those places that um, I don't know if they're like Chinese massage um, over here, they're Thai a lot of times. Thai mas- or Chinese, and like you look at them, and they're just they're the dingiest looking places, or they're open twenty four hours. I just my assumption is that all that happens. There's there. a I was talking about it the other day. There's giveaways. If you see a roll of toilet paper in that bitch. <laughs> You're coming, bro. Like, you see a roll of toilet paper, you see a bottle of fucking, fucking rubbing alcohol, you see multiple different types of lotions. Like, there's there's little telltale signs. Well, years ago in New York, I was actually really, really sick, and the closest, I wanted a massage so badly, and the closest massage place was, like, one of those. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to go in here and, and get a massage, and I Definitely got the impression that it was the first time that anyone they had saw ever a woman come that actually just wanted that just a massage. Wanted a legit massage. I remember going to one of those like a legit massage place and was high on ecstasy, and I must have been. I think I was so loud it freaked them out because they would just be like touching. I'd be like, ugh, <laughs> ugh. They just didn't. They had like an inflated sense of their own uh, abilities after that. She knew something was going on. I was extremely <laughs> fucking hot. My heart was beating very fast, and I was moaning with every touch. But I, I do not. I do not regret it one bit. And it wasn't sexual. It just felt awesome. Yeah. All right. You're this. You're here because you wrote an article in Psychology Daily. Psychology Today. Today, excuse me, on Psychology Today, why your smartphone is destroying your life. I agree with you. Let's hear. Let's hear some of your reasons. So you know, this is something that I think a lot of people probably sense. But what I found to be really compelling is new data that indicates that if you actually can see your phone and then are asked to do something that requires any level of intelligence, you per, you perform less well. You're not as smart if your phone is in sight. And I what think, is their theory behind that? Uh, well, they they actually performed tests where they would have people, um, you know, take a test or perform some type of task oh, with the phone. I got to hide my phone. I'm dumber. <laughs> I'm dumber. All right. Um, and and they and they showed that everyone would perform much what was worse. It, what was the percentage worse? Uh I I'll have to get back to an exact number, but it was significant. I find that, um, especially with selling the book, I'm always on the fucking phone. Yeah. Uh, but I find that the the other night I just like didn't 
have the phone out of the, I made a tr- like a conscious effort to not have the phone at the table. Yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. There's stuff that if you if you go out now you look everyone's got their phone on the table. Some people are not even face down. Like yeah, face I up. know. I think I think we sometimes think that if we're not actively scrolling that it's okay if our phone is just always sitting there. Yeah, it's you know? always present. It's, it's almost like, hey, I'm waiting for something better to come along while I'm talking absolutely. to you. Absolutely. So they've also shown that um, like, if we're interacting and our phones are on the table, even if they're face, face. down, um, that we actually are going to have a more superficial exchange. And we're not going to show as much empathy. We're just not going to connect on the same level. Which that bums me out. I don't. I don't want that to happen. I don't want the quality time that I'm spending with someone. Or imagine with your kids or your family. Phones are tools, man. Um, Absolutely. They're like anything. They're yeah. like a hammer. They can put in a nail, or you can bust someone's head open. Yes. Or like pistols. You know, they, you, they, they can be used for good and for bad. Like just like just like anything else. Yeah. There's actually a term used to describe uh, being afraid of being away from your phone, which is nomophobia. Nomophobia. <laughs> yeah. Like they had to come up with that because so many people, like if they left their phone at home or if it's not with them for a bit, or they have to turn it off on an airplane, people have like actual anxiety attacks. Do you see that more? Is that more generational or is that for everybody? No. In fact, um, in a lot of the research that I've been reading, it's there's a, there are a lot of teenagers and the younger generation begging their parents to get off their phone and pay attention to them or, you know, be attentive to their sporting events or whatever it is they're they're doing because the parents are just not present at all. My daughter's I, I would say my daughter is better at not being on the phone than than you are. Yeah. Uh but I'm selling all the fucking time. All I do is look for memes and sell. I know. So I think that's the challenge is many people have jobs that require them to be engaged a huge percentage of the time. It's exhausting, too. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's constant totally. work. Like, it's I'm working before work. I go to work. I leave work. I work. Yeah. It's like just constant. Constant. So what I mean, what I advocate for is creating your own personal rules. Like, I have, I have personal rules of how I engage with technology, and it doesn't mean that I completely swear it off. It doesn't mean that I, you know, don't touch my phone for days on end. But right. I have very specific things that I do on a daily basis. You set boundaries. Absolutely. And and I and I think it makes me mentally sharper and more sane, and I think it makes my relationship stronger. The shit that, cra- that is crazy to me is, and I'm sure there's tons of people that do. If you got any fucking phone experiences, call up eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Is the couples that text each other in the house? I've heard of this. I had a, a friend once. He and his wife they they would fight via text message in the same house. I could. I can't. Text uh, message actually makes it harder to understand yeah. subtext and tone and so it, it it's you never want to fight on i was on getting cussed message. out by a woman like three days ago via text and i kept trying to call her to like yeah like i don't want to argue with you yeah, via yeah. text you got something to say let's fucking talk and she would just send it to voicemail and keep cussing me out via text because oh, was she of a younger she was generation younger. she's yeah. not used to she's yeah. not used to confrontation in a way and to me, I wasn't going to yell at her. I just was like, "No, I just want to talk this out." Like, I'm not. I'm not going to be do- writing out fucking paragraphs. Yes, for you to not understand. Well, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, where there is some kind of a misunderstanding, whether it's via email or text message, and then, and you're irritated, and you know that it could escalate. But if you pick up the phone immediately, you're able to just have it just resolve the issue yeah. or I'll, I'll i'll write back some real snarky ass shit i know like that's like, the temptation my, my shit is cutting on a motherfucker <laughs> that's the temptation i i then, then i gotta walk it back mm-hmm. and that's especially with people i work work with you know like ugh, it's tough yeah yeah you have to be really careful yeah i'm an that. asshole you know what i mean like i get it i'm an asshole but like well but i mean don't wouldn't you agree that technology um it, it facilitates that because it's not you're not anonymous to these people, but they're it, it, it's very different writing something uh, digitally than saying it to their. Face. I also say this. Uh, also, phones have ca- caused people like to be their best self and their worst self. On you see the you see yep. more assholes. That's exactly right. And you see more fucking virtue signaling. Yeah. Like these people are fucking pieces of shit. Yeah, yeah. But then they get behind these causes that they don't do anything for, except for they'll post a picture about it and like, and just push the cause that they're doing nothing to help. Absolutely, it's a combination or comments in in articles. You know, people just trolling and being incredibly mean and negative, or projecting this in- incredibly unrealistic image of their life. And, yeah, yeah. I, I did a pill mix a week ago. 
It's called the pill mix because Sir- Lord Sear used to do the drunk mix. Okay. So I don't drink. He started the mixes, so I was like, I'll do the pill mix. What the fuck? I'm getting paragraphs from some guy. You shouldn't fucking perpetuate the use of pills. And I'm like, suck my dick, dude. Is this Shut- a one? It's not one of your listeners, obviously. Clearly, it's one of my <laughs> listeners with the, with the chalk full of opinions, talking shit from a fucking private account. It's like, dog. <laughs> fuck, do you care? Like, I'm. It's, uh, uh, I guess I'm always curious what those. I think it's about power in those situations. I'm because on one hand, I'm curious what they want to get out of those interactions, or, and they're not even interactions. Oftentimes, they're one sided. It's a one sided yeah. rant, and they and sometimes even if they do get a reaction from you, it's they're like, oh, whoa, you know. I, feel, I think a lot of times they want to feel good about themselves. Other times, other times they troll to be fucking. They to need they need attention. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm trolled mm-hmm. by my own fans mm-hmm. just because they want attention, mm-hmm. so I ignore them because mm-hmm. I don't want to I don't want to give into that behavior. But like, yeah, p- people are shitty. They're shittier. They are fucking shittier the- on their. And then the, then the worst thing that the phone what the phone represents is to me, it's like it, re- it represents privilege because it's this thousand dollars piece of equipment. Right. That, that you have the pri- you you have the privilege to walk around with this thousand dollar piece of equipment that was made on the backs of somebody getting fucked over. Like cats were were literally trying to jump out of windows in China. Oh, yeah. So there's a sort of socioeconomic issue, and then from a sociological perspective, the thing that really bothers me and that I think is having a very lasting effect on shaping our culture is the fact that we now privilege someone who is not with us more than the person that's present well that and yeah and it gives a voice to people that shouldn't have one mm-hmm. i'm sorry some of y'all should shut the fuck up <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about you're not well versed in this and then then you blah 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 on fucking social media let's go to uh sterling and like look man i've, I've been guilty of that shit too before but like that's why i don't that's why i, I try not to post about shit i don't, I don't know about right because i don't want to perpetuate some bullshit mm-hmm like I've seen the dumbest shit. Like Black Friday was because of fucking slavery. Like no, it wasn't. It was. It's because we are in the black. Right. It was because when it's when you're doing well in the market, you're in the black. Most people bought shit during that time, so it helped getting get stores in the fucking black. But there's some fucking meme that perpetuates something total. Uh, this misinformation yeah, that yeah. gets spread all around and it goes unchecked. And that's bad for people's brains. And then they're walking around with this fucking bullshit idea. And it's like, dog, no, you're, you're wrong. Well, the democratization of the people's voice is both the great thing and the bad thing about social media and mobile phones. Is that now everyone can contribute, but the downside is now everyone can contribute. I know. <laughs> and unfortunately, the fucking average IQ is 100. So, like, <laughs> Sterling in Miami. Hey, Joe, what's going on, man? You got hey. it, bro. Hey, how you doing, doctor? Um, so, basically, I went to I went to a Chris Rock concert the other day, and people were going crazy because we had to put our cell phones in the sleeve. Mm. It was like this magnetic sleeve for like three hours. And at first, I'm like, yo, the concert was sold out with a comedy show. It, you know, the, the tickets are like 150 200 bucks to get in. So I get into the venue, and, and there's nobody there. So I'm like, yo, what's going on? Like, how is this shit sold out? But then... There's nobody here. But sure enough, as soon as the lights cut off, you know, everybody comes in like cockroaches. You know what I mean? Because people freaked out about their cell phone. But it was like the greatest. <laughs> they wouldn't come in until the ever. show's fucking started. Yeah. That's And look, man, and that is not generational. I always tell this story. When no. I, went, I, I went to Flea with Mac and there was some fucking, <laughs> there was a 50-year-old fucking filming the whole goddamn thing. Yes. For his 40 Facebook followers on a fucking iPad. It was glowing like, like I wanted to smack him. I'm like, dude, I paid $300 for these seats, bro. I forget who it was. It was some um, group or artist that it went viral. They called out the people that were recording, and they basically were like, "We're gonna walk. We're gonna walk off the stage if you keep. If you keep. If that's more important to you, we're here giving you a show." And you're also you're not doing. in the moment. Like, no. Somebody was like, "I just had a threesome the other day." That was like, "You film it?" I'm like, "No, I was fucking. <laughs> no, I'm focusing on a threesome. <laughs> that shit's hard enough as it is. It's fucking a lot. Like." fucking a lot going on here i'm gonna add a phone into the equation like, no well okay so you <laughs> i'll be here now dude like how you're not truly rocking out you're not truly rocking out if you're filming the fucking shit and look i've been guilty of filming stuff too but it's 
it's kind of for business. Like yeah. I'm literally, this is my job right now. I'm filming to show you what a good time I'm having so that you can buy my fucking book. Yeah. I hate to say it. Some of, you, some of y'all don't have, you don't have a reason for that. Like how do you feel when you're at one of your events promoting your book? Um, maybe you're doing a reading or you're, you know, you're, you're speaking and, and someone, you, you look out and half the crowd is on your phone. I mean. I've been really lucky. The phones rang twice. Uh-huh. In all of my readings, and one time it was my fucking dad, and he didn't know how to turn off a fucking phone because he's 70. <laughs> so it just kept ringing and ringing. I'm like, right. great. And then, the, you know, and you know, people are pretty fucking respectful. That's great. And like, honestly, if they're filming the shit, I don't really, I don't pay attention because my face is down reading mm-hmm. the fucking book. So it doesn't affect me as much. And it's not like I'm at a concert where every, you look, you go, you you look at the concerts now, and everybody just has their fucking hand up, dude. Yeah, how can you dance? Well, and I understand it from the comedians' perspective as well because they they want first of all, sometimes they're trying out new material, and they don't want that to be. Spread. Yeah, let's say it's a shitty joke that yeah. bombs. It's like instead they, of bombing for fifty it. people, yeah, <laughs> it's just bomb for like a gang, like a bomb for two thousand people. Yeah, that's not cool. There's a there's a bunch of people that want to talk about this shit. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Doctor Anna Akbari is here. Let's. Oh, this shit is crazy. W- one of the things I would love to hear, and I'd love to hear this from you too, is like what rules people have created for themselves. I don't think you should use it on a date. I, there's been a couple times where I'm where I have business that I really need to attend to, and yeah. I'll excuse myself. Absolutely. But like if you're if you're on a date, I think that shouldn't. You shouldn't be at dinner. You should not be on your phone. No. When I'm socializing in general, my phone is away. The only time I'll bring it out is either A, if someone, if we're coordinating for someone to meet up with us, and yeah. then once that happens, I put it away. Uh, or if we want to bring out the phone to show something. Or if I want to watch porn on a plane. That's yeah. the only time. <laughs> JK, I just saw a video of some guy jerking off. Uh, Stephanie in Utah. Hey, I just call in my ex husband. We used to always fight over texts, and then when we were in the same house, I was downstairs and he was upstairs, and he texted me asking me for a divorce. That is some hoe-ass shit. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you got kids with him? Pretty awesome. Yep. Yep, two kids. Damn, that sucks. Half did, of them are bitch-made. Yep. Did you text him back, or did you go talk to him? That's a good question. Oh, I don't even remember. It's been like eight years now. I don't remember. I just was shocked by that. That's kind That's That kind of... That's the tackiest shit I've heard. But doesn't that just tell you, yes, this is the right thing to do is not be with Oh, yeah. This yeah, there was no question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone asked for a divorce why, via text in the same house? Yeah, I think that's a, a good test for whether shit, or not if you I'm breaking up with a chick, with I'll fuck, Yeah, I'll fucking <laughs> hop on the phone and be like, hey, it's not working out. Via text? Yeah. You sh- yeah I hope you screenshot awesome. that shit. <laughs> I hope you screenshot that shit. So well, I, I, hopefully you're on to bigger and better things, Stephanie. Oh, always. Anything's better than that. You Mormon? You in Utah? I'm just asking. Did he <laughs> have other wives? Not. I'm one of the few. All right, <laughs> I grew up that way, but I'm not anymore. Did you have the secret like underwear and all that shit? Oh, the secret underwear. Nope, never got that far. You never got Thank deep goodness. into the secret underwear? No Jesus jammies. No, the Mormons got secret underwear, bro. It's some real shit. Like, they rock secret, true. secret they do. draws. They absolutely do. I don't know what magic they hold, but I do know they exist. It's like protection. Mm, against yeah, I don't understand it either. I don't know much about it, to be advances. honest with you. I kind of tried to stay away from all that. Yeah, it's a, it's a motherfucker. I find it fascinating. I, I find that religion fascinating, but yeah. There you go. Let's go to uh, t- Ben in Toronto. Hey, what up, dude? It's chilling, man. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I used to work uh, in desktop handheld support for BlackBerry, and I've seen everything you could throw at me in regards to uh, people and how they handle their phones. Uh, we would deal with consumers, celebrities, everything, and backing up their phones, making sure they get everything good. So there, there's uh, what we call hypersensitive users, and if they don't have access to their phone and it's not backed up on, on extremely fast intervals, they lose their shit on us. Huh. I, and the other point is like you know I'm, I don't want to get extra political but like these lost emails I find that to be complete bullshit <laughs> oh you mean like deleting yeah. them off your D- just uh, certain people have lost emails like I don't buy that that they don't one... receive no they got hacked uh, and uh. then they they lose the emails all mm, of a sudden mm-hmm. like no nah, bitch them, those shits are somewhere in the ether they're not fucking <laughs> ain't no email someone lost. has access to them yes yeah that's that is that fair to say ben you're with blackberry yeah they did they they 
there should be backups on almost everything. I mean, the stuff that you're talking about more is like the server related stuff where like, you know, Hillary and all that fun stuff where they had it on an external server and then that didn't have redundancies and most places do. So it's kind of BS really. If you, if you ask me, that's what I was thinking. Lose those uh, stuff. They're, yeah. they're backed up in, in most places. It's redundant. Yeah. I'm not that. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Okay. Lost emails. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Anything. Yo, yeah. yeah. I fucking post, I, I post some shit. Me getting fucking faded on goddamn Instagram. That shit is there forever. Somebody can find that. Well, you know, what's interesting about, uh, Blackberry is, you know, back when, before Blackberry, um, was started to get beat by, the iPhone mm-hmm. was what was that around 2009 uh they was referred to as the crackberry because it was addictive it was so addictive because it was it was the only platform where the the email refresh was constant so you would receive the the new email immediately and yep. all these executives would get completely addicted so to they're that. on it, it yeah they, they keep refreshing yeah and that's why some people still um cling to the blackberry over the iphone because the iphone i think the fastest you can auto refresh is what every five to 15 minutes or something really? and that's like too long yeah another uh i think another if uh iphone or computer phone etiquette is I, I and i've seen this happen before and it might be generational I, I see motherfuckers taking pictures of people asleep and then posting that. And I'm oh, like, yeah. t- like, well, it's a little weird. Don't you think? Yeah, Like, why are you taking pictures of kind me of sleeping? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I don't give you permission to fucking take a picture of me sleeping. Like, and then now you're posting it for everybody. Now, is that's- this someone who, would you say you've seen this with someone that's like spent the night or you just fell asleep at some random place? I don't even know if it happened to me, but I've seen it happen to friends. And yeah. it's, it's like, why are you doing that fucking weirdo? Yeah. Like, why? Like, I don't even know if it happened to me, but I've seen it happen to friends. And yeah. it's, it's like, why are you doing that fucking weirdo? Yeah. Like, why? Like, I need permission. You, you're not fun to just be taking fucking secret pictures of me and then posting it. Well, that's that's the other problem is that everyone becomes a celebrity in their own network um, in this new sort of age of technology. And then by extension, everyone, everyone becomes part of the paparazzi as well. Let's go to Tyler and connect. And, and all we do is tell on ourselves. Mm-hmm. Tyler. Hey, what's going, dude? Go ahead, hey, man. So every time me and my boys would go out to the bar, we'd all put our phones on a stack on the table, uh-huh. and the first person to pick up the phone would have to buy the next round of drinks. I've heard of this. That's a good. I've heard yep. of that, that one too. Mm-hmm. Or like the first person whose wife calls. Yeah, oh, yeah. or the, or you have to pay you for the whole. To chill with your boys. Yeah. And last thing you want to do is deal with somebody outside of the party. That's yep. why you guys go out to get away from people. Yeah. No, that's a good. That's a good way to do it. That's a good way to get around it. Danny in Colorado. <clears throat> Hey, yeah, I work at a zipline tour company in the mountains, and we don't get cell phone service there. So people, like, freak out because they can't take Snapchats or Instagram videos. (laughs) And um, they, like, will take a video as they're walking through the woods and then watch it while they're waiting in line to go on the next zipline. So weird. Yeah, we're so we're weird. living for what the future perception of what we just did is going to be, rather than what it feels like when we're actually in that moment. Yeah, just be in the fucking moment. Yeah, like just enjoy that shit, have fun. Right. Yeah, they're not even present. It's just the most bizarre thing. But you know, by contrast to that, there are actually startups that uh, are all about creating experiences where there is no cell phone service where you cannot be plugged in and people are paying lots of money to go to places where they have their technology taken away from them like they're like their children because they can't be trusted to just discipline themselves and do that let's go to uh matt in florida matt yeah here in florida yeah hey uh, Diana. hey hey yeah I, w- I was wondering i'm 35 i'm a dad and like i i use my phone as a form of communication and to push information out. But my 12 and nine year old seem to only consume content. Like mm. they'll always have like a hundred unread texts or, you know, 500 unread emails, whatever. Is that, is that what you see in, in youth and the way they're consuming 
information from the from a cell phone? Yeah, they're eight. They're, they have way less attention. I've, and I've noticed. I was at a party the other day. They they had the they had like two TVs on, and they were watching some shit on their phone. I'm like, how do you like how? Right. <laughs> I think there's a lot of consumption, but I think a lot of them are putting it out, but not not necessarily in the same channels that they're consuming it in. So it's not always reciprocal. I mean, I've experienced this a lot where certain generations you might you might send them an email and then they'll seek you out on Instagram and send you a message there to reply to it because that's where they're more comfortable communicating. So it, it, it isn't always happening directly within one channel. Hey, look, man, I got some ass. I get a lot of pussy off of the internet. I saw a lot of books <laughs> off of that shit. Like, I'm not here shitting on it all the way. No, not it's at all. It's a tool, but it's also addictive, and it's something you got to be really careful of. Like, I'm, I'm like, I am addicted to the phone. Like, Okay, let me ask you this. Do you sleep with your phone? I sleep with it right next to my head. and With it on. Yeah, because I listen. I have insomnia, and I listen to lectures that put me to sleep. Like okay, but yeah, every night I fucking. But then, do you I'll turn off all your notifications so that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's sometimes good. I forget, and motherfuckers will page me at like seven in the morning, and I'm like, it's seven in the fucking morning, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, I. You I know actually... you are. You're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I turn uh, my phone all the way off at night. Let's but... go. Let's go to Aaron. As you should, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron. Yeah, uh, hey, Aaron. Yes, I got uh, some crazy rules at the place that I work at because we mm. have a bunch of government contracts with the Navy, so mm. they have some outlandish rules. I bet. You didn't tell me one. Uh, well, nobody is technically supposed to have their phones on them while they're on the production floor. However, everybody's using their cell phones to watch videos on YouTube, Facebook. Yeah. I got I got into it with a band the other day. I was I was FaceTime. I was I was doing IG live as I do to sell the fucking book and I was in, yeah. I was in a public place. Yeah. And they came into the place and they were in the background of my shit and I commented on it and then we had words. Really? Yeah, they were like give me off. They didn't well they didn't say it to me. They said it to somebody else to say it to me cuz they got big balls. Mm, um mm. It was some fucking boy band. I don't even know who the fuck it was. But it was like, yeah. And I kind of hear where they're coming from. I get where they're coming from. Uh, Which is part of why a lot of performers don't want their stuff being recorded and yeah, but don't, put don't, out on YouTube just either. Don't stand next to me while I'm doing an IG Live. Too, right. And you know, we'll be fucking golden. Like... <laughs> the, well, I mean, I know, think I mean, also I gotta, you clearly were not trying. It wasn't yeah. about... I didn't even know who the fuck them. they were. Right. I don't even know you, bro. And you'll be gone in fucking. You'll be gone in a year. <laughs> I think it's interesting what he's saying, though, because you know it's a government contract. You're you're not going to change those rules. But for other companies and and smaller startups, trying to police people um, and their online behavior is is pretty much worthless. People are people are going to find their own cadence with you know working versus checking their email, checking what's happening on social media um and it's much more effective to make it a productivity model where it's about what you what you're supposed to be producing in a certain amount of time rather than policing whatever someone's doing every minute of the we're day. gonna end with my man alex in north carolina go ahead alex hey hey i just wanted to say hello first of all hello anna what's up hey Dude. hey um uh, i feel that parents just don't want to fucking deal with their kids so mm-hmm. they just give them some electronics they don't want to be fucking parents anymore. Like, I see that at the I, restaurants have, all the fucking time. Yes. I see that at the restaurants. They, 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 they go fine dining. They don't want to deal with their children. Yeah. And they're just on their fucking, they're, they're on their little fucking flat screen shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with you. And, and it's interesting because, you know, I've seen this from both an academic study perspective and a more anecdotal uh, perspective with my my friends' kids, um, and that you can really, really tell the difference between the children that are have very limited screen time. What are, what's, what are what are the what are some of the main differences with um, kids that have had that don't get to use it? The attention span is is wildly different. The the there are, the ones who do not are not on the screens all the time also tend to be more hyperverbal. They have better imaginations. They're able to um, uh, tell stories. They're able to engage. They don't know how, these kids don't know how to talk to grownups and shit. You, no. you, yo, I, I've been like the grownups. They can't have conversations. Like, and it's not just me. Look, I get it. I look like a pedophile. But like, they, <laughs> like even like regular people that don't look fucking crazy, they're like, hey, how you doing there's champ? And the kids will just be fucking no. shook. 
They'll be so fucking scared. They don't know what to do because they don't know how to deal with anything that's not like a fucking iPad. Yeah, and and you'll notice that the kids that are constantly um, on a screen, they tire of something. If it's if it's a more traditional toy or game, they're they're tired of it in a few seconds. Um, whereas the minute the screen comes out, they become mesmerized by it. Whereas other children are able to to again engage their imagination. Um, cooperate communicate with other both children and adults um it's 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 wildly different to just engage with those children than it is with the ones who are always on the screen neck and back issues because of phone the, yeah uh, poor posture because of phone absolutely there are a lot of physical ailments that are my, my old chiropractor was like the phone's the best thing that ever happened in my business yeah i bet he was like we went from cavemen to now we're going to standing upright and now people are going back into caveman pose because they're always on their phone they, their shoulders slouch, their head is down. The current number, and again, this is an average, so you may be much higher or lower than this, but the current number is somewhere in the ballpark of 85 times a day that we touch and engage with our phone. I'm more than that. Yeah, I'll bet a lot of people are higher than that. I'm crushing that. I'm, I'm way more than that. It's mm-hmm. fucking pathetic. All right, so there you go. It, uh, the, the phone is a tool that can be used for good and for bad. Be careful. <laughs> Look, I mean, you have to create your own rules around it, or it will consume your life. It will affect you. It will affect your relationships, your your professionalism, your children. Um, it's it, it can't go unchecked. And there it is, Doctor Anna Akbari. Where, where can they follow you? They can follow me on any of the major social media channels at Anna Akbari, um, or at, they can find me directly at my website AnnaAkbari dot com. That's A N N A A K A B A R I. No, no, no. A K B A R I. Akbari. I'm stupid today. <laughs> it's because of my phone. <laughs> He's been on his phone too much. Yeah, I'm losing brain cells. Good to see you, Doc. Good to see you too. All right. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. Shay Ford 5, shout out to Anna Akbari. Atlanta, I will be there tomorrow at Postman or Postman. I don't know how to spell it. P-O-S-M-A-N Books at 1 p.m. Come out and see me. If you can't make it there, buy the book on motherfucking Amazon or some other spot like that. Go to your local bookstore. We got your, we got your back. Uh, coming up next, it is Feel Good Friday. Do not go anywhere. Shade four five. You are checking out the All Out Show with Rude Jude on demand. Ah, I feel good. Make me feel good. Make me feel good. Move that Oh yeah, it's Feel Good Friday on the All Out Show. Tell us what you feel good about. Eight 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 Shade forty five. Yo, what up, though? It is Feel Good Friday. Talk shit all week long, and then we stop for, uh, I guess, about 40 minutes and focus on the good. What are you grateful for? What are you happy about? What are you looking forward to? Call up right now. Let us know. 888-742-3345. 888-742-3345. What are you grateful for? I'm go for a fucking G-Walk tonight and go look at the drunks. Got a nice, relaxing weekend planned. Just chill at the crib. Might even make a mixtape. Because I've been way into that as of late. Make mixtapes one night. Get faded to them the next night. Smash to, smash to them the following night. It's my life right now. That's just my life right now. And uh, I am looking forward to that. So that's what I'm feeling good for. What are you feeling good for? Call up right now, 888-742-3345. All right. Sorry, I'm just, you get to watch my head work slowly. <laughs> so fucking, fucking slowly. All right, um, 888-742-3345, 888-742-3345. It's Feel Good Friday. Let's start with some bone, first of the month. Yeah. <laughs> 
Come on. Cassie checks it. Come on. Little ditty about welfare. 888-742-3345. 888-742-3345. It is Feel Good Friday. What are you feeling good for? Call me up right now. Let's have a discussion about it. We got Josh in Pennsylvania. What up, Josh? What's up, dude? Chilling, man. What are you feeling good for? Uh, last year, I done fucked up my back. I got behind on a lot of my bills, and today I officially paid off $5,500 and got my ass out of debt. Good for you, bro. That is good shit. That's a... That's how that's how they control you out here nowadays is with debt. So, bro, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. I got my first child on the way, and I don't got nothing to worry about anymore. That's dope, man. Congratulations, and stay out of debt. Keep that Thank shit you. going. All right, man. Only buy what you can. Yeah, that's it. have a good one, man. Peace. Uh, D in Pennsylvania. D. Yes. Yo, what's up, homeboy? What up, though, man? What are you feeling good for? Yo, I got me an orgy going on this weekend, tomorrow night. How many people? Like how many people do you need for it to be an orgy? Yo, you know what? Ask John, cause John put me onto the shit that it was gonna be an orgy. I said it was. Uh, I was gonna call it just a four couple fuck fest, but John was like, "Yo, it's an orgy," and I think John's right. So ask oh, you that got motherfucker. You got eight people? Yeah, that's. So that's, there's gonna be eight people. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like an orgy, right? Yeah, they. Uh, I don't know. I think I, I would more so say more people would be an orgy, but I just think it's just going to be a fuck fest. I would call it a fuck fest. You looking it up right now, John? How many people? Ca- ca- how many people constitutes an orgy? What's the minimum number of people required? Uh, for most people who like uh, group sex, three people is a threesome. Four people is a foursome, and an orgy well, needs no, to include. Pe- okay, you're right. An orgy needs to include five people or more. Bam. Okay, yeah, we got it going on. I'm getting my grown man shit on this weekend. Is there one that is out of the out of the three other women in there? Is there a chick that you really got your eye on, or are you just happy to be? You know what? You know what, you? I only seen one, and she's Asian. She a little she a little curvy, but um, shit, I don't give a fuck. I I know. Yeah, it's a. That's my favorite thing about threesomes is new pussy. Like I don't even like threesomes. I just like an excuse to fuck her friend. Like that's basically. Yo, you know it. what? You know what it is for me. I want to make my girl feel like she's, like she's number one. It ain't all about. Yeah, I'm gonna be happy to you know be getting my nuts rubbed and my dick sucked. But I want my girl to feel special throughout this. How do you how do you make your girl feel special while you're fucking another woman? You pay more attention to your girl. This is pay more attention to her. Well, I hope no matter what, even if like the pussy is way better than your girls, n- no matter what, and leave up out of there with nobody's number. If it happened once, it'll happen again. There you go. Like spoken like a true gentleman. Yo, my man, I appreciate that, homeboy. Well, fucking you, you enjoy your orgy this weekend, sir. Is he Yo, gonna nice talk? Yeah, yeah, take care, bro. Take care. Let's go to Julian. Right, peace out. Julian. Ju. Yeah, hello. What up, though, hey, man? good, Ju? Shit, chilling. Hey, what are you feeling yo, good I'm for? Feeling good. Look, I'm feeling good because I was able to make it back home to Houston after my homeboy, my old homeboy, left me stranded in Los Angeles, dog. How did he leave you stranded in L.A.? What did he do? Bro, we took a 25-hour drive to L.A. from Houston, Texas. We went through Border Patrol twice. He said that before we left, he said that, okay, it was cool, you know, when we was in L.A., we could stay with his homeboy. And then, you know, after that, he lived in Oakland. So he was like, okay, Dad, we stay in L.A. for the weekend. And then, you know what I mean, we just drive to Oakland and you can stay with me and my mama. I was like, all right, me and my mama. I was like, all right, cool. We take this 25-hour drive. We get to L.A. His homeboy, we get to L.A. at like 6 a.m. His homeboy talking about, oh, well, you know, he got to work till like 3 p.m. And then on top of that, when we get to L.A., he started talking to his mama over the phone. And they start having arguments and shit about, I don't know, money and shit. Something about, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, he asked his mama for some money. And his mama was like, oh, you didn't ask me how my day is or some bullshit like that. So I ended up getting a hotel where he said I could stay at his homeboy's house. So we end up doing that. So the next day, well, when I get the hotel, he's like, okay, well, you know, we should be good for uh, Oakland when we get there on Monday. Because, you know, I'm probably just going to buy my mama some roses or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But usually be good to stay because, you know, we tight. So I'm like, all right, cool. So the next day, he's talking about, oh, well, do you have family in Oakland? I'm like, bruh, I don't know, bruh. <laughs> and then when he said that, I'm like, bruh, I know what's going to happen. So it's like, I'm telling him, I'm like, nah, you know, I called some people. I'm like, we don't have, I don't have a family in Oakland. And he's talking about, oh, 
but we might just have to get you a, a, a train ride or a bus ride home. You know what I mean? So I'm sitting there like, okay, I get the train ticket for that Sunday because they cheat. Yeah. But you know what I mean? I needed him to drive me to the airport. But the airport was like. All right, bro. Julian. I had to put you on hold. I, I'm glad you got home. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, we was gonna go to lunch. I got I got the Subway sandwich, and I usually don't like go to Subway. I'm a Quiznos guy, and it is all right, bro. Okay, all right, you you got home, bro. Congratulations. Long story long. Uh, Amanda in North Carolina. Amanda. Hey. Hey, girl. What are you feeling good for? I'm feeling good. For International Book Day, I ordered Hyena, and that bitch is here, and I'm going to read it this weekend. Fucking A. Enjoy Hyena. Yeah, you'll be able to read it in the whole weekend if you sit down. It's a quick read. It's, but it no, goes... It won't take me long. It goes harder than a motherfucker. But what? What? My day would be great if you could tell me how to get that sign. Tell you how to get what sign? Oh, this, Hyena? Book? Yeah. Ugh. You can't mail it to me. Like, I can't... I can't People were mailing me the book and I was signing. Like shit kept getting lost in the mail, so I don't want to deal with that. Uh, you just when I, when I go on when I go on a book tour for the next one, just bring that with you. That's that's all okay. I can that's all I can tell you. Okay, well my day won't be great, but my weekend's gonna be good reading the book. Yeah, you enjoy that. Uh, let's go to James in Michigan. James, what up, though? Hey, what's going on, man? Shit, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I just moved from Michigan to Milwaukee, Wisconsin with my girl. I just got a new job, and I think I'm going to go home and ask her to marry me, man. That's cool. How long you been with her for? Uh, I've been with her only like six months this time, but a little more the last time, like a six year months. before. You're like a lesbian couple. You about to get married <laughs> after six months? Hey, well, you know, when the pussy good, what else do you do? I don't know. Good pussy won't good pussy won't make me stay, but bad pussy will make me leave. That's kind of how I go. Um, but yo, if you if you dig it, you dig it. Uh, congratulations. When you know, you know. Sounds like you know. Are you old or some shit? No, I'm only thirty. Or I guess I don't know. You know, at thirty, that's that's about. I'm only thirty. She made me move. You know, I moved here from uh, from Michigan to Milwaukee to be with her. I got a new. I've been here for a little bit, and, you know, I think it's the right time right now. All right, hey, look, don't let me stop you from marrying your girl of six months. <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be good. Hey. It's going to be good for us. Most people, you can tell after a half a year if it's if she's the one. I was with her before, like a year before, and then her job moved her across the country, and then... Uh, How you like in Milwaukee? Uh, Milwaukee is dope, man. Yeah. It's a... Uh, it's a different type of scene here. Where in Michigan and, uh, you moved from? Uh, I was uh, I lived in Detroit for a little bit, and then I moved to uh, Battle Creek. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is like an hour away. Yeah, but, that's what's up. All right, well, shit. Sounds like you yeah. look. You know what you want. You fucking go do it. You do the best you can yeah. with her. You make that shit work, homie. Good luck, man. Come in that pussy. You make a baby. <laughs> come up, come. baby. Yeah. Yeah, come baby. <laughs> All right, man. Peace. Trish in Illinois. Trish, what are you feeling good for? Hey, what's up? What up? What are you feeling good for? Hey, I'm feeling good because the day I broke up with my boyfriend, so tonight I'm turning up. Oh, shit. You got the fucking girl shoes on. Fuck them. Yeah, fuck. fuck nigga free. Yeah, that's cool, man. Are you are you gonna fuck? Are you gonna go smash somebody, or are you just like gonna go out and just rage with your homegirls and get get faded? I don't know. I'm probably gonna smash them because I'm trying to get over him. Yeah, I kind of miss him. I'm I'm sure you do. Um, new dick is always good. Um, just it probably won't fill that hole that you have. Just know that, okay? But you just, you enjoy that new dick. Get you some rebound feel, dick. Thank you and enjoy your Friday too. Thank you. Thank you. If I was there, I would give you rebound dick. I'm fucking, I'm perfect for rebounds. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Get you, this is what you, you want. Get you, it's not even from me. You can get it from anybody. You want someone that's going to, got good dick, conversation, and will buy you food afterwards. That's all you need. Yeah, and I need my ass ate too. Yeah. Of course. That goes without fucking saying, right? Right. You can have them eat that ass, girl. I'm eat that yeah, ass. Thank you. All right. I'm gonna take your advice. Yeah, get that asshole eight. All right. Eight. Eight eight seven four two three three four five. It's 
Feel Good Friday. Call me up right now. Let me know what you're feeling good for. Let's turn this shit up a notch. 888-742-3345. It's Feel Good Friday. You better pray. When you see me, put that nine up in that pussy hoe. Cock it back slow. Rock it back and forth. Wait for the nut. Then let my trigger go. Boom. Pussy guts all over the room. If you ain't seen it, then you're fiending for that meaning. Of- 24 deep, no sleep, much stress, nigga. Nigga must be living up in hell. And here I am. Same motherfucker that got my nigga sick. Try to kill my super sleep and more deeper into the sickness shit. Cash, what daddy's bringing home for supper. Nigga, nuts and guts and slabby. You and me, motherfucker. Now we. J45, edit 8742 It is Feel Good Friday. What are you feeling good for? Call me up right now. I want to know. We got Annette in New Jersey. What's up, girl? Hello, Jude. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing good today. I'm doing good. I got a message this morning that my stalker is on life support in the hospital. Damn. What? How long you had a stalker for? Oh, uh, my God. He's been stalking me a couple years now. Really? What is that? What is that? What, what, like, what do they do? Well, I've known this guy a really long time, and he's really fucked up in the head. And, you know, we all are to some point. Yeah, right? but, like, what does he do? Like, where, well, where does he show up at? Show, tell me. No, the first thing he did was he put water in the gas tank of my Harley. Damn. And then he found out that it wasn't me that did what he thought that was done, so he came on my front door knocking, crying, oh, let me take care of your motorcycle. Then after that, everything was fine. Then we moved to Florida, and then he started robbing everybody on Big Pine Key, and so I came home, and... I've never just, how did you make a stalker story boring? How did you do that? I find it hard to believe that you were stalked based on that story. It sounds incredible to believe. How did you make a stalker story boring? Annette? Yes. All right, just give me the fucking nouns and verbs, girl. Just fucking. Okay, stalker. Yeah. In the hospital, on life support. He tried to kill me a few that's times. Bad. That's bad. That's not stalking. That, you buried the fucking headline. You buried the headline. Okay, go ahead. He tried to kill you. Yeah. How? When you loosen somebody's love nut. Okay, all right. Jesus fucking Christ, you're so bad at this. I can't. I'm glad that he's on life support. I can't talk to you anymore. Yeah, just hang up. Walk away. Eric in North Carolina. What's up, dude? What up, though, man? What are you feeling good for? Well, it's Friday. I'm going home to get some virgin ass. I've been with her for about two years, and I had never had butt sex, but I think I get to hit it tonight. You've never done butt sex yourself? Oh, no, no, no. With her. Oh, with her. I was going to say. Right. I wore a butt plug from you guys a few months back, and I received it, but it was broke. It was, was going to help. Yeah, it was broken. It was, was it one of the, was it the, one of the, like, crystal butt plugs? Yes, it was black. Crystal butt, butt plug. The glass. The obsidian butt plug. God damn it. All right, we're going to put you on, I'll put you on. Hey, his butt, we sent the butt plug, we sent him broke. Yeah, literally, I have two pieces at the house right now. Don't use that. It's going to be really hard to fish that out of her asshole. You, we don't want you using that. So, yeah, all right. Gotcha. Just, just, yeah, we'll, next time, we got to wrap these dildos better, guys. They do, they are, they're not rubber dildos. They do break. And very expensive. That was a very expensive butt plug that... So uh, are you gonna get her drunk or some shit? Like how, do, how does that? How does the? Uh... Well, about six months ago or so, when I actually won the butt plug, she agreed to it then, 
And when we got it and it was broke, she was like, oh, I ain't going to do it now. So I've been hounding her about it for about a month. And now she's like, okay, I guess I'll do it tonight. But only because it's like St. Patty's Day, as she's saying, so it's a special yeah. occasion. It's, so I'm going to agree. Yeah. <laughs> is she Irish or she's just observing St. Patrick's Day? She's observing Good. St. Patty's Day for a day to do it. She's Indian. Well, fucking heck. She's like American Indian or like Hindu? No, American Indian. I oh, wish. Shit. No, American Indian is bad. That's fucking dope. Um, no, yeah, I'm, I heard them Hindus was badass in bed, though. Yeah, I heard that, too. I heard that they got do, uh, like, uh, real talk. I heard, like, they uh, culturally. It's, uh, yeah. Chicks are into, like, fucking tricks and stuff like that. Um, I'm sorry that our poor packing... The, our poor packing of the butt plug almost cost you the chance to sodomize your Indian girlfriend. I'm yeah, sorry. It, it was very painful for about six months, but I get it tonight. You enjoy that, asshole. Are you going to start with the pussy and end in the butt? Split Probably out. Probably more likely. That's, that's the way to do it. That is the way to do it. All right, you hold tight. We're going to take care of you. Leslie. Leslie. Yes. I've been holding on, man, and then my phone fucking shut off. So. Jesus you there? Christ. Yeah, I'm here. All right. What are you feeling good for? I'm feeling good for my sobriety today. Today I have 20 months clean from heroin addiction. How long I'm were you? 26 years old. Damn. I was on heroin for eight years, so if I've got 20 months clean, you do the math. So I started using when I was about 16. Mm. So, did you go uh, straight into needles, or did you start by snorting that shit? I started by snoring that shit yep. like with pills, and then once they quit making pills, able to snort heroin was the the next best thing. Did you, you know? ever have to prostitute yourself? I never prostituted myself, but I never I never sit here and say that that wasn't in my future or even my yet. Um, I always found the drug dealer to be you know to run around with. So. Oh, you would you would just fuck the dr- the dope dealer and end up pretty being able- bitches don't have to fuck for dope, dude. <laughs> I mean, you are, but you're just, you, you're only fucking one person. Right, right. Yeah, but I did, I fell in love with him. He's in prison now. Oh. But I mean, that's probably the best thing that could have happened on my end. Is that, away from is that what caused you to think about going sober? Is it him getting locked up? No, I caught a charge. I got a possession with delivery times three. Um, I pled to one of them. Mm. They put me in a program. I don't know if every state has or whatever, but drug court. Yeah. Um, I completed the program. I work in the recovery field now. Good for um, you. Uh, yeah, I went from living the animalistic lifestyle, though, you know, like, I probably would have sold my soul, myself or my soul for it, you know. I would have bought it. <laughs> it's been a, um, it's been a journey. Um, I'd have gave you I an ounce of, to, uh, I'd have gave you a gram of heroin for your soul. <laughs> it's nice, though, to be able to sit here today without a man telling me, if it wasn't for me, you know, because now I've got, I've got my own shit, I take care of myself, I got my kid back. Like, Look at you. Fucking turn your life around. Congratulations. Yeah, I did. And I just wanted to give the message that recovery is possible. I mean, there's so many people struggling with it. And I can't really put the program's name that I'm in, but it ends with anonymous. So that shit works. And that's all I got to say about it. Narcotics anonymous. Yeah, I can't say it. So it's to be anonymous. You know, I ain't going to blast their shit. But, I think that's what it uh, is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I can't say but the name, works, but it rhymes man. with sparcotic <laughs> spin- spinominus. <laughs> we don't promote it, you know, but it's, uh, if you want a new way to live, man, I mean, that's just that's fair, you know. Work the steps. Work the steps. All right. Uh, let's uh, look. Uh, we'll, uh, I'll take some of these calls and we'll be done. Um, Lawrence in New York. Yo, what's up, Trudy McCruder? How you feeling? Good, bro. Good. Uh, what are you oh, feeling good man. for? Uh, trust me, we're up top in Buffalo, so it's been snowing like a bitch all week. Finally waited for Friday, which is dope. Got a flight out to Jamaica in the morning for my sister's wedding, so that's what I'm feeling good about, my man. Awesome. Enjoy that shit. Enjoy Jamaica, and enjoy the, enjoy the heat, dog. Let's go to Corey and Cali. Corey. What's up, man? I'm feeling good on this Friday, man. My girlfriend, Sean Tree, she pregnant with my sixth baby, man. I'm having Woo. six, and I'm only 25, man. God damn. You all with the same girl? Nah, man, I got four different baby mamas, but this is the sixth kid, though. There you go. There you go. That child support must be crazy to the motherfucker. 
Oh, man, let me tell you about it, man. This shit is hectic, man. Well, fucking A. Enjoy. And you're still with, you're still, you're with your baby. This this baby mama, you're actually with her yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, I'm with this baby mama. I'm, I'm planning on marrying this one. Nice, this dog. This one right here. This is it. This is it. You settling down. Fuck yeah. Are you going to get snipped? Or are you going to just keep, do you want more kids? Uh, so really, if this is a boy, then I'm done for a minute. But uh, before I leave this earth, I plan on getting 10 kids out of it, you know. There it is. We were put on this earth to multiply, you dig? Well, you're doing your, you're doing your part. You are fucking leaving it in. <laughs> you're leaving that dick in, sir. <laughs> hey, my pullout game is way less, way <laughs> no strong at all. I can't, I, I can't pull out. No, it's just too good. Nah, you got yeah, you land dick like a farmer, like you got one of them big families. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking go ahead, enjoy yeah, that. Try to have a football team, man. Yeah, no, but shout out to San Bernardino, California, man. I just wanted to get on this radio, man. I, I love you. Yo, shout out to you, bro. Let's go to uh, Dan in Wisconsin. Dan, yo, man, what's happening? Chilling. What are you feeling good for? Dude, I'm feeling good. A couple weeks ago, I got inspired by you to go, uh, you were talking about herpes or something like that, and I got to thinking, man, it's been a long time since I got checked, so I went in about a week and a half ago, got my STD check done, and I just got the results back yesterday, and everything's clean, everything's good, I'm ready to do some white boy freaky shit tonight. Not guilty, enjoy that shit. You feel, <laughs> you feel there, there's a sense of confidence when uh, you get to bang a chick with no condom, knowing that you won't well, give her anything. Well, it's one of those but things where I, like, I want to take my test results to the bar and just show girls, be like, look, I'm clean as fuck. You want to go bang? This is something that you don't want to fuck. You know, just keep that in the back of your mind. You know what I mean? Okay. When talking to them, it's, uh, it's, it's the confidence that you want to have knowing that. But if you show them the test results, sometimes they take that the wrong way, like you were promiscuous and would need or, to show or, them. Or they might have thought you do doctored that shit, like some Photoshop, you know what I mean? Yeah, straight up, yeah, like. <laughs> that being yeah, said, I did post that. my no, shit. No I, I did used to post my shit on fucking Instagram. But I'm known for being a whore, so let's be real here. Wrote a whole book about it. Hyena, go get that shit. All right, um that was the that was it. Shout out to Gary. He's, he's happy his dick is working and Michael paid off his child support. Uh we're gonna play some music and come on back. Feel good Friday is done. You are checking out the all out show with Rude Jude on demand. Shade, 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 45. That was Feel Good Friday. Don't you feel better? Don't you feel good off of that fucking Feel Good Friday? I know I feel great. Fuck yeah. Going out to Atlanta, taking a red eye out there. I will be at Postman, Postman. I wish they would tell me how to say these things. POS, MAM, books. 1 p.m. tomorrow, signing books, shaking hands, taking pictures. Did you buy a book? You can come bring that, sign it up. Greatly appreciate it if you buy another one. Because, uh, you know, it's a bookstore. They're there to sell things. If you're that fucking against it, fine. Come out anyway. I'm just asking, you know, just coming out. Come on out and see me, Atlanta. You bothered me. I'm going to be there. Speaking of bothering, John is doing the news coming up next. You got uh, how if you can tell someone's rich by their face. And um, exercise. What's the best music to exercise to? Don't go anywhere. It's an all-out show. You are checking out the all-out show with Rude Jude on demand. It's time for News from the Chin with John Z. Matthews. There's a study which is looking at the idea that people can tell if you're rich just by looking at your face. You look poor. Yeah, probably do. You yeah, do. I do. You got I don't look you, poor. Look at your... You either look poor or... You're you're either poor or you have two hundred million dollars in the Bahamas. <laughs> Just sucked away. Yeah, there's no there's no in between here. You're either you're either fucking like crazy fucking super duper uh, fucking Steve Jobs same turtleneck fucking Zuckerberg shitty sweatshirt every day rich. Or you are a dirt person. There's no in between. Dirt person. A dirt person. Yeah. You're a dirt person. <laughs> I look like a guy who's who's seen some struggles. That's that's how I view it. A guy who's got some heart. AKA a dirt person. <laughs> it's not a dirt person. You're living back with your ex girlfriend, John. 
Is that what's happening? Yeah, you're a dirt, you're, you're a dirt person, bro. You went from you went from out of your ex girlfriend's house to your gay homie's house back to your ex girlfriend's. I've got a lot of options. You, you, you don't have any options. That's the fucking. That's it. You want a mommy? No, that is not the case. You want a mommy? No. Take care of me, mommy. And I just cut a check, so. Oh man, dude, you're just a fuck. Yeah, you look poor. And if I think I think people think because I, I I got this weird sickness. I think people would think that I look poor as well right now. Eh, I, I, you get the fleece thing going on there. The I glasses. do, but like I'm covering up the fact that I'm pale as fuck. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to fucking hide the fact that I'm fucking sickly. I look like I'm rich with AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like HIV. I'm HIV rich, as they call it. So, but you you try to look rich though with all the the accoutrements. Yes. Yeah. The jewelry, things like that. Yeah, I got well, it's like one jewelry. gold chain. Sorry. <laughs> it smacks off of poor women's faces when I'm on top of them. You actually wear that in bed? I don't take this shit off. It stays on all the time. Really? What do you think? I, I, do you I think I just put on my necklace every day? John? I, I, I really have no idea. Well, let me just put on my necklace. It's a small chain. It right. doesn't get in the way. It's got three medallions on it. I'm good. It and goes it, to the shower? It's gold. Okay. You shower that on? All no, right. I take it All off. Right. Sorry. I take it off. These things I just don't consider. Wow. What do you, you, you picture me like naked taking off my necklace? <laughs> draping it? So putting on the soap dish till I'm done? Maybe. Fucking weird, man. All right. I it didn't... just stays on, man. It's a small fucking chain. Huh. It's like one of them old, just an old school, old school like weirdo wop chain. Fucking, right. what is it like? Fucking twenty inches long or some shit like that? It's not long at all. Eighteen. So it's been on for years. Yeah. Okay. It just stays on. Got the Italian horn from Y'all Suck sent me uh, Italian horn. He's a listener. Got Saint Jude and I got uh, the Holy Family from my grandmother. Rest in peace. So that's what I got on my fucking neck. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about how you can tell if a motherfucker is rich or not by their face. Right. And they were able to do this. You look like you're rich with chin. <laughs> yes. I'm flush with chin. Uh, but yeah, I, I would imagine I, I look... Do I really look poor, poor? You look... Like I said, bro, you look like you're either a zillionaire that gives no fucks about money because that's how much money you have but that is like the t top point one percentile of all of the world you look like that or you look like dirt poor because <laughs> zuckerberg dresses like shit that guy dresses like fucking shit i think he's upped his game a little bit over the years the fucking bit. sweatshirt he's drab as fuck dude or who's Microsoft guy? He dresses like shit, too. Bill Gates? Yeah. He you doesn't look, dress like shit. He dresses like a look, like look, professor. Look at all of the fucking zillionaires, and then you'll see like the fucking rappers and st people like me. They're wearing fucking Fendi belts and Cartiers. Yeah, but that's too, that's too much. It's too far. I know. It's because we're trying to prove <laughs> that we're rich when we're, when we're not. Don't you understand? We're trying to be like, oh, look at me. I made it. Meanwhile, I'm in a one-bedroom apartment. Tell me what the, tell me what the, Q, the rich cues are. It just has to do with the fact that you're you're happier, and so therefore they can look at, uh, they'll zone in on the mouth and then also the eyes, and they'll see there's some wrinkles there, and they'll say, oh, the person's smiling quite a bit. They got smile wrinkles, right? Oh, I look broke because I got the I got the frown, I got the frown scowl. Yeah, but I only do that when I'm I just scowl when I'm thinking. People think I'm mad, but I'm just fucking deep in thought. And I don't smile that much because I look like a pedophile when I smile. I look like hey. Hey, you like video games? Come on down to my basement. <laughs> hey, kid. Hey, you look pretty cool. I don't know what kids play. But you want to play Minecraft? Come on down. Minecraft. I got Minecraft and popsicles. <laughs> hey, I start smiling. Can't do it, bro. Just can't do it. But people say money can't buy happiness, but clearly you're not as freaked out as, as someone like me on a regular basis. I know, man. You, can, you cannot be happy taking the bus to your girlfriend's house every day like a loser. Do you realize it's two and a half hours, by the way? One way? What a loser. 
I have got this, a lot of a lot of me time. <laughs> what a loser! <laughs> You're such a loser. Would you stop with that? I told you. So if you add it up. Go get a fucking bachelor pad in the fucking hood. I've already taken care of it. When are you leaving? Uh, days. All right. It's done. I'll believe it when I see it. Hey, I've already... You put down the down payment? Yeah. All right, good, man. What, what neighborhood are you moving to? It's not too far from here. Tell me the neighborhood, John. So, what is it? Uh, the, uh, oh, Franklin something village or whatever it's called up there. Fuck, I don't know. By the Scientology scene. Oh, that's a good neighborhood. Yeah, that's too good for me. Yeah, no wonder it took you forever. Go get in, go in a I poor know. neighborhood. You're poor. I know. I you should have been at like Avenue Five and fucking in Pico over in that neighborhood. That's where I that's where I was when I moved in over here. Yeah, it was so hood that they wouldn't rent to me because I was white. <laughs> <laughs> that's how fucking hood it was. <laughs> I went over there. I was like, hey, "Hey, is this for rent?" And like they couldn't speak English. Like, no, sir. Not, no, not for you. No, not, no, <laughs> sir. I'm like, it looks like I could rent here. They're like, no, no, no. They wouldn't even rent to me because they knew I was probably going to start complaining about shit. Like, nah, you can't come here. We need someone that's not going to be, be fucking bitching about roaches. That's where I started. Fifth, I was, I was, I was over, over in K Town. There was a fucking there was there was a, there, there was a brothel running next to me. You'd hear motherfuckers getting fucked up. One of them was the dominatrix. She would murders on my street. But it was always palm trees, so you never really you never felt like too bad. K Town has really improved, though. Yeah, this was fucking 15, 16 years ago, bro. Yeah, those rents are a little, little intense right now. Yeah, that's why you gotta go south. Gotta go south of K Town. Whatever, man. Give me something else. Money can't buy happiness. Yes, it can. I said that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it can't. No, it can. I'm much happier now than I was before. Look how happy I am. It's inspirational. <laughs> Uber and Lyft drivers, uh, they are. Really struggling. I didn't realize how little they make, but according to a new study, they make a median profit of three thirty-seven per hour. So it's three dollars and thirty-seven cents per hour. That is just. How shit. do they figure this one out? Tell me how they got. How many got? How did they get to this number? So they are factoring expenses to the the car itself, the gas, the wear and tear, the, 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 the wear and, and the wear and tear, and then so seventy-four percent of drivers earn less than the state's minimum wage. Based on. Like, uh, a how survey, many hours they work? Yeah. I mean, so just because they're out there using their own car yeah. and they're just, you know, based on the rate that they're getting, it's just shit. And then so, and this is a survey over 1,100 drivers. It's so, it's, it's so weird because to me, like, I feel like they make out like a bandit. Like, I'll go, I'll get high and take G-walks and then I won't want to walk a half a mile because, like, my buzz is over and I'm just like, fuck this. And they charge me $7 to go half a mile. Feels to like me that just fucking killing it, and then I tip too on top of that because I'm a tipping ass motherfucker. Man, I just don't tip those guys. I feel bad about that. I don't think you should feel bad. That, the, that, I, was, a, that was the whole model with Uber is that you don't deal with any of the money. That was like the that was the upside. I know it sort of trained me not to tip. And... I'm sure you were probably good at not tipping before Uber came. <laughs> that is along. not true. That is not the case. Ask yeah. any of these bartenders. I take care of them. Oh yeah, you take care of the bartenders. I do. They, they give you free fucking martinis. Yeah, I have to. So it's not really a tip. That's a good way of putting it. I don't know about that whole 337 thing. It seems to me. But you know what they get in return? Freedom. You name your own hours, man. You work when you want to. And there's that that comes at a price. So they they might be getting paid slightly less. I don't know if the 337 thing is. Well, the, the interesting thing here is that since they're... Since you can demonstrate that you're making so little money, then you can really uh, take care of that on your taxes. You can say you're operating at a loss and then really start working that angle. Yeah. That's what I'm doing with my taxes this year. I'm, I, I'm operating on a loss. I don't make any fucking money off the fucking book yet. Like, I'm still waiting to get paid off that shit. And all I've been doing is fucking paying for that. I, like that. I just bled out money this year. The publisher doesn't kick down for any of that? I'll get paid down the road, but right now I'm operating at a loss. Speaking of which, I'll be at uh, po po Postman Books in Atlanta. Come see me. Buy the fucking book again, because I'm operating at a loss. <laughs> <laughs> Signing and everything. Meet and greet the whole nine. Grinning and gripping. Give me another story there. 
It's Mac tonight. This probably won't shock you, but up tempo music, it helps people exercise for a long wow. period of time. It's true. Whoa. So uh so something with a faster beat makes you want to move. And the study found that those listening to energetic tunes were able to sustain exercise for more than 10% longer than those who worked out in silence. Speaking of my G-walks, like, yeah, like, when Aphex Twin comes on or some shit, I get going. I don't even realize it. Like, you just start matching the beat. Sidebar shit, I used to listen to books on tape when I went jogging. Because, you know, you kind of zone out and you listen to the story and you're jogging. And then I listened to 1984 and I never ran again. I was like, just... I never ran again. It was so fucking depressing. What? 1984 is kind of where we live right now, where all you do is, like, people tell on each other, and you're ruled by Big Brother. They say it's like, they say that our times that we live in is like Brave New World and 1984 smack together. I haven't read Brave New, Brave New World, but 1984 is bleak. I do not exercise that, guys. You might fuck around and kill yourself. Like, I remember just getting, like, I was, like, a half a mile away from home, and I was like, what's it all for? What does it fucking matter? Who cares if I exercise? I'm being watched. Fucking NSA. That depresses you. Fucking phone's bugged. You know how I knew is when I, we were talking about prep pills and all that shit, the next thing I know, I'm getting, they're trying to sell me prep pills on YouTube. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, how specific is that? How many, how many how many people's fucking Facebook channels try to sell you AIDS pills? They listen to everything. So you really think that someone was listening to the show and then suddenly... No, they wasn't listening to the show. They was listening to my fucking phone. Oh, 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 oh. It's 1984. Everything, we're all bugged and all we do is tell on each other. That's why you should exercise the techno. That's the whole, that's, that's the fucking, that's the whole deal. Fucking put on Sandstorm. Put on fucking sandstorm and get to jogging their champ. Ba -ba 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 -ba. For some reason, they're saying here that in their study, a lot of the people were Hispanic, so a lot of the music people enjoyed Latin inspired. That's good to exercise too. It's got a fucking, it's got a fucking, uh, it's got a, got a little me, little love. This is what I would exercise too. This, I'd be, I'd do my stretches right now. Touch my toes, get it ready. Get, Come on, go. Da, 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 da. Get that jog up. Big drop. Da, 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 da. Get a nice froth going. They're even fuck, they're even running in the video. I didn't, I didn't notice that. Then there's some guy with fucking like Ray-Ban wraparounds. Chicks getting chased by a fucking bald-headed dude. They're Europe. Yeah, it clearly works for them. They're running their asses off. This this song is good for uh for fucking uh exercising or roofing somebody. You make the call. Roofing somebody? Whenever I hear this, I just picture some fucking some wop with arch eyebrows fucking drugging someone's drink. Shave chest. You know that guy. You know Long Island, I'm talking about you. It's when I take my break, kind of slow it down. Catch your breath. Yep. And then it comes back. It's my exercise routine. Don't you feel like fucking working out? Hit some push-ups. Go hit them, bro. When was the last time you did push-ups? Oh, it's been a while. I can do it though. I, I, I How can... many push-ups can you do? Uh, it's been a while. Probably 10, 20. 20 push-ups? 20. Here we go. John's about to do push-ups. Yeah, All right, hold up. Let's count it out. Go ahead, John. One, two. Oh, he's getting it. Three, four, five, six. <laughs> he's already struggling. Oh my God. John, no. Look at him go. 13. Yeah. 14. He's getting it. 15. 16. <laughs> get it, Johnny. Get it. Yeah. 20. 20. You got it. You did it. Thanks. This is all Sandstorm. Oh, Sandstorm got him there, y'all. Sandstorm got him there. Fucking crush that shit, John. John just fucking nailed <coughs> I'm in bad shape. <laughs> <laughs> You was dog. You came out the gates just smashing, and then by the time you got to seven, <laughs> it was, was fucking a struggle. I was, I was in pain. It was all heart after that. It was that was thirteen push-ups of heart. <sighs> Total of twenty, not bad. Turn that around. Maybe we should stop smoking. <laughs> yeah, how do you think? <laughs> I know that. And the martinis <laughs> catching catching up with me. None of us taped it either. That was the worst part. God oh, fucking damn it. None of us fucking taped that shit. All right, y'all. That was the news. Enjoy your weekend. John, you, you, you rest up. You recover. Thank you. Oh, I got it. I got it.
<laughs> He's gonna die. John, you gonna die. You look worse than me now. Yeah, I, mean, I thought I looked like shit today. You fucking, oh, buddy. Yeah, I, I, I bounce back, though. I can yeah. barely lift my hand. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, 20 push-ups, John. Yeah, I know. I haven't done them in a while. Yeah, it's clearly. Just tearing them out. Yeah, there it is. That was the news.